Okay, so the last section is logical fallacies in common language, which we love so much. Um, I love talking about logical fallacies and because um, marketing is like, that's all the use is logical fallacies, just like totally outrageous things. And it's appeal to the consumer and the consumer gives in and buys stuff. So this is used a lot in marketing. So, um, and we're just gonna go through them quickly because this is more vocabulary and then we have some examples. Um, so a logical fallacy is just essentially when logical arguments can be invalid when the premises aren't true. And there's just not sufficient evidence either, right? So here are some common ones that are always used, right? So ad hominem argument attacks the person making the argument and ignoring the argument itself. So meaning that, um, you know, if I'm making an argument of who should do the dishes today, then, um, you know, and they're, and the, my roommate's saying, well, you know what, you know, you're a math major, so you should do the dishes. And you're like, what? that's totally like, why does me having my major have anything to do with me doing dishes, right? Like dishes is cleaning. That's a, a homonym. And you're like, yeah, I am a math major, so I'm going to be better at doing dishes and I'll do the dishes, right? So it's totally a logical fallacy and people attack, um, the actual person making the argument than the act, it's trying to support the argument itself. Okay, so the next one is appeal to ignorance. So this type of argument assumes something is true because it hasn't been proven to be false. So I would say, um, you know, I'm a cat. <laughs> and you're like, no, you're not. Yes. Yes, I'm a cat because you haven't proven that I'm not a cat, right? So um, it's just that appeal to ignorance. And that can be in many manner. And I really do feel sometimes in politics, they definitely do this logical fallacy quite a bit. Because just because you don't, or you're not familiar with a topic um, doesn't mean you necessarily don't know that it's false or not. But they assume that you don't know much about it. So... The next one is appeal to authority. Um, these uh, arguments attempt to use the authority of a person to prove a claim. Um, and so, for example, um, here, sometimes, you know, uh, we can use our authority, authoritative figure to to make an argument correct. Like if you were my secretary and I said, "I'm a cat, aren't I?" boy, it would be nice to get a raise. And the secretary, yes, you're a cat, you know. So you sometimes the appeal to authority sometimes sways people's opinions and whether the argument is valid or not. The next one is appeal to consequence. Um, the appeal to consequence means like you're making that decision based on what the consequence is versus the truth. So that's usually um, when... Um, I guess maybe like, uh, you know, experimenting on drugs or sexual partners, things like that. The consequences don't seem too good. So you're just going to maybe lie or not tell, not have valid reasoning, you know. So again, like a lot of the times marketers appeal to consequence. Um, the next one is false dilemma. The false dilemma argument falsely frames an argument as an either or without allowing additional options. So for example, um, I like this one a lot because it's like Coke or Pepsi, you know, Coke or Pepsi. You're like, well, I don't like, I, I like Sprite. No, Coke or Pepsi. <laughs> That's a false dilemma because you're not going to, you don't want to choose either, right? Circular reasoning it means that the premise is the conclusion and the conclusion is the premise, right? It just goes in like a circle. Like I am a cat, cats cats are cute. I am a cat, cats are cute. I must be cute because I'm a cat and you know, it just goes in a circle. Straw man is, is used quite widely um, uh, in I feel like in everything on TV and in the media, right? A straw man argument involves misrepresenting the argument in a less favorable way, favorable way to make it easier to attack. Um, and so that I feel like is 
you know, our climate right now where we like to misrepresent what we're trying to say just so you would side with me. And I mean, the political elections are a great example. They always like over dramatize little things to make it better to attack the opponent. And so, um, you have to be careful with that one. Post hoc is um, an argument that claims that two things happened in sequence, then the first must have caused the other. So, um, the like I forgot, I forgot my purse, my wallet was stolen. Therefore, because I um, forgot my purse, some someone someone stole my wallet because I left my purse at home, you know, so it's just a, a good way of saying, well, these happened in an order and therefore one caused the other. And it's just really not the, not a really good way to argue. <laughs> and then the last one is a super popular one. It's correlation implies causation. And I have a bunch of examples of these, uh, like divorce and uh, how much butter we eat. There is actually a huge correlation between it. And if you take ever take statistics, we get to discuss that, um, the correlation, because it's actually mathematically computed. And so sometimes we're like, well, does divorce cause butter eating or does butter eating cause divorces, right? And you're like, no, it doesn't mean that they cause anything. It just means that there's a relationship, oddly enough. And there's like a bunch of these like weird relationships here that are strongly related, but it, it, there's nothing to say it causes, there's causation there between two variables. So we just need to be careful with those because this is the, this is a big one, I think. Okay, so let's look at the examples. The examples, uh, the first one is only an untrustworthy untrust, person would run for office. Politicians are untrustworthy. That is proof of this, right? So what they're saying is here's an untrusty person that runs for office who's a politician and a politician is untrustworthy. So here's an untrustworthy person. Here's the politician who is untrustworthy because they're run for office would be untrustworthy. And then it just becomes like, which is the premise, which is the argument. So we say that this is circular reasoning. The second one example we have is in the 1950s, both atmospheric carbon dioxide level and obesity levels have increased sharply. Hence, atmospheric carbon dioxide causes obesity. And you're like, well, no, here's point A, point B. There's a relationship here, but does one cause the other? Does obesity cause more atmospheric carbon dioxide or does atmospheric carbon dioxide cause obesity? And you're like, nothing, nothing causes any of that, right? And so we would say that this is correlation implies causation. So we just have to be careful here of which um, logical fallacy we have, but you can see that some of these are recognizable types of arguments, right? This is the best one. The oven was working fine until you started using it and now it's broken. So you must have broken it. You're like, well, no, I just used it once. Like just because they use the oven doesn't mean that person broke it, right? So the oven was fine until you started using it. So, and I, this is a common argument, right? And then, so, um, because this happened first, right? It was working fine first, then someone started using it. So the conclusion is that this person broke it. So happening, this happened first, second, and now this is the conclusion. So that one is that sequential one. If two things happen in sequence, then that must have been the cause, um, the cause, right? So if you go up here and look at these, um, here post hoc is when two things happen in sequence, right? One must have caused the other. So this is, this will be post hoc. And these actually have other names too. Sometimes if you look on the internet, these actually, these names have similar names to other ones. You can't give me a D in the class. I can't afford to retake it. Right? So you cannot give me a D. 
Right. Well, the word give itself is bothersome because we don't give grades, right? We earn grades. And so if this student didn't earn a grade, then somehow their financial situation lies on our shoulders. That doesn't make sense, right? So if you can't give me a D in the class, I can't afford it. So what is the student doing? The student is trying to make the instructor feel bad saying, you know what, if you fail me, then I I have no money and I've lost, right? And that is appeal to consequence to that instructor's perspective. Like, oh my gosh, like if I don't pass a student, they're going to be homeless, right? And so that is nothing to mess with. So this is appeal to consequence argument. The student is trying to argue by using the consequence of what will happen rather than the cause of what happened. All right, so the last one is the Senator wants to increase support of food stamps. He wants to take the taxpayers hard earned money and give it away to lazy people. Boy, have we not heard of that kind of stuff lately, right? And this isn't fair, so we shouldn't do it. So you're like, okay, what? What isn't fair? The food stamps? You're like, well, people need to eat. I don't understand, right? So then let's read it again, right? So a senator wants to increase support for food stamps. He wants to take taxpayers' hard-earned money and give it away to lazy people. Well, first of all, I don't think that's really nice to say because people on food stamps work really hard too and they're not lazy, right? And it may, it is fair because everyone deserves to eat. So let's go back and see if something fits this really good. So let's see. So um, so the senator wants to increase food stamps, right? So that's the real argument is like they want to be able to give more people food stamps that need it. So we're kind of taking the argument and then and twisting it to like lazy people and it's not fair. Like I, I just don't. So they're taking this argument and not representing it in the way that it should be because we should be discussing food stamps and the need and how much need is needed for food stamps in the community. So here, if I look down over here, I look at straw man and it represents the argument, misrepresents the argument in a less favorable way to make it easier to attack. So yeah, they in the less favorable way was like how they were lazy people, right? And then we could attack lazy people. That's not right. That's an illog that's um, a logical fallacy. So this would be straw man. And I feel like po in politics, um, this happens a lot. Like we take something like this where it's such a great thing, food stamps, and we could give to people and allow everybody who does, everybody deserves to eat food, right? Everybody does. So I, it's great if, if our my community needs it, we should be able to provide that, you know, with some data of how much increase the need is and all this stuff. But this uh, person who's arguing essentially against it, right? They're against increasing the taxes for food stamp. They don't say that. They're like, no, let's not increase tax money, our taxes to pay for food stamps. What, what route did they take? They misrepresent the argument and say, it's my hard earned money and they're going to give it away to lazy people. Well, that's not true, right? And it isn't fair. Like, how is it not fair, right? So, again, it's just taking like this argument of re something really important, like eating and food, and the need for food into something that is um, a less desirable. You're like, right? I do, I do work hard, and I don't want my money to go away to lazy people, right? And it's not fair. So you go off on this like weird tangent rather than addressing the argument.